Uh, it looks as if maybe my microphone is a bit too loud. But I'm going to go with it a bit too loud. But I'm going to go with it a bit too loud. Okay. Let's try that. Right, sorry about that. Um, today, we're going to be looking at inputs, keyboard and joystick. And uh, that's going to really help us to make some very basic games. Uh, you know, it's essential, of course. But after you learn that, with all with what you already have learned from this little few lessons you could make some simple 8x8 graphic games <clears throat> the very first thing i'm going to do is copy some uh, a note into the into our code just so we got a reference i like to do this <coughs> excuse me I'll have to manually comment all of those. Right, so that's the keyboard. <coughs> and, uh, That is port two joystick as well. Doubles up. And that is port one. Alright. <coughs> I do apologise. Um so these are memory addresses and each one of those measures keyboard input the first five bytes <laughs> that's five bits of the byte so um bit zero to bit four goes i think that way all right so if you were wanting to check if um if one was pressed, you'd get you'd you'd look for the byte in that address, and you would uh you'd only be interested in bit zero, the first bit. And the weird thing about keyboard in the spectrum is they're always one. The bits are all set until you press the button, and then they're reset, so they're zero whilst you. Are pressing it only so you've got to check if it's not one to know if it's being pressed <clears throat> okay so with that knowledge it's pretty straightforward stuff the only um, tricky part to this is the uh, to visualize the bits you know you've, you've got to understand we're working with binary here um, not that not any specific uh, integer values or anything trying to think where we would want to put this probably check for input right at the start of our program <coughs> or our loop I should say so if we want to check let's check keyboards keys one to five first we could load a 16-bit register with one of those addresses the one that corresponds to one let's go 
going to look in there and get the date, get the byte that's in that address. We're using the input, input command. Go and look it up on Z80 Heaven if you struggle to understand what it means. In a nutshell, it's seeking, um, it's checking for input. Bring it up myself and get a better explanation for you. Yeah, reads a value from a hardware port. So we've got all these port numbers here that correspond to the different keyboard keys. We're reading the first um, byte from that address on an input. says it affects no flags doing that <coughs> another new command next is RRA <coughs> and I'll look that up on Z80 heaven so I get a nice concise explanation but what I was doing is rotating the bits and it does modify flags Flags are stored in the F register, you probably know already. So, this is a 9 bit rotation, so the carry bit in the F is used to hold the bit that rotates away. So, in other words, we can rotate it to the right. We're going to take the first bit, bit zero, that will modify the flag or depending on whether it's a zero or a one because it's carried over to the carry. So if we look in the carry and find that it's a zero, then we know that that key has been pressed. We've then rolled that away and then the next key along is now at bit zero. So we can do the same operation over and over until we reach the fifth one. So in order to do that, he's using another command which I don't think you've seen, the AND operation. This one I really could do showing you it on screen rather than trying to explain. <laughs> Basically it compares two binary um, bytes, two bytes but two bytes binary. Each bit is compared to the corresponding bit in the other one and they have to both be one for the result in for the for the result of the AND function to be one. So if either of them are zero, the result of that bit will be changed to zero. So we're going to do That's the same as writing AND2. And it's like a mask. It'll mean that only this bit could possibly what be 1. All of the others will now be 0 in, in the accumulator. And if, if this bit was already 0, it will remain at 0. Mask out all bits. Oh, I can't type here. 
all bits except except bit one. Not bit zero, bit one. Actually, scratch scratch this for now. There's a simpler way. <laughs> I will keep that there for later. Well, I can type that again. <coughs> I can type that again. <laughs> we'll start off doing the same thing. Just loading that address into BC using the input command. Um, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, that will read the hardware port. We'll roll a bit like I was talking about. Bit zero moves into the carry bit of F. So now we could just call in the event that that's zip, that the carry flag is zero. So what that C means is we're looking at the carry flag. The N means is that it's zero. It's not set. So call C would mean is is carry one. Well, that means is carry two. And then we'll need a function. But that will be um, what key is that? Key one. So uh, let's just make a function name up. Thing is, we're not really going to use one, two, three, and four for our game. Let's just put, let's just call it one or key press one. In fact, pressed key pressed one. And then I'll do a to do just in case I forget. Handle or uh, oh, create function for this. That'll do. Alright, but there is a problem doing this in that this function here could affect, um, well, it certainly will affect A, it could affect B, C. And it certainly could affect the uh, flags. So to get around that, push AF to the stack and pop it back straight after doing that. Now we're back to this. Doesn't matter what we're doing here now. AF will remain in the state that we want it, which means we can just go RRA again. Might as well write push AF now. Call NC key key pressed two. All right. So it's that straightforward. There's going to be five of these. Copy and paste. Well, let's write the pop AF first. Uh, 
and there's five in each in each uh, in each memory ad address port you know so um, yeah that that's it really that's actually good enough but um, what we would do normally is um, break this off into its own function where you'd load this with whatever port you want to check and then you'd call the function so we'll go ahead and do that let's make sure this works first for now we're just going to go left and right with numbers 1 and 2 don't think I've got left yet ok let's make that, so I'm going to copy <coughs> copy move right move left the same thing will occur where we load that instead we'll compare that it's not zero and return if it is um, if we're we're going to want to um, have a speed variable in a minute and you're going to want to take into account for that because that's just comparing it's exactly zero we're in fact it's not checking that, it's checking that it's more than or equal, we haven't got to that bit yet but we want to actually have a little bit of a buffer we'll just say 10 for now so if you're less than position 10 oh we're still working in character cells at the moment anyway so actually return Z which just means it will be 0 if it equals zero, but actually because it's a character cell per movement, it will it will be zero. Not sure why we load it twice there. Probably not, might not be needed, but I'll write myself a little note. simply just deck A instead and that's it because we're not going to use speed we're moving one character space per frame at the moment why complicate it when you don't need to So we'll call move left in when key two is pressed. We'll call move right when key key two. So one and two, left right. <laughs> I have to comment them out because them keys don't do anything right now, and I don't want to make a function. All right. no longer want to call move right there anymore which means we might want to delete before we do this Yeah. So far, I haven't um, I've tried to explain everything. I don't think I've left anything out that we've used without 
knowing what it is. We've looked at RRA, that's quite self-explanatory when you think about it. So let's see if it works. Compile it. Alright, well we haven't moved yet, and there we go, we're moving. So it works absolutely perfectly, there's absolutely no um, lag here or anything. I mean, yes, it's flickering a little bit. The ways around the flicker are normally to add another halt. Um, there's something called double buffering, which I haven't myself learnt or even tried to do yet, but that's probably something we can look at in just a few weeks a lot of this the reason I'm documenting this series like this is actually for my own benefit half of it you know um, I like to be able to go back and look at this stuff helps me learn it would have been superb if we had um, you know a real vibrant chat going on in the chat box I am getting messages saying this the mic's too loud on my software. Not any messages from human beings. Anyway, so this is how you do a keyboard input, okay? Now that actually would work for a Sinclair interface joystick <coughs> as well, because they're mapped to one, two, three, four, five. However, left is two. I think left is bit one and I don't know the rest of them off the top of my head am I? I think the f bit three is right No, tell a lie, that's up. I should write this down in my little note up here, because then it would be there forever. In fact, I could go here. Do you know what? It's unimportant. It's not important. Let's not bother with that. Um, what I want to do next is break this into its own function so that you don't have to just check that one over and over. No, I mean, that's going to be more complicated as well. And also, it's slower. This is a faster way of doing it. It's tailored as well to exactly what you need it for. So, So you see WASD is actually a good one to do because you only need W from that and then ASD are right there. So I tend to default to that and then I add a secondary um because I don't know how to do redefinable keys easily. But I just tend to add like a choice of keys, profiles, you know, standard common ones. Interestingly, you can add a Kempston joystick support. And when I did that, um, my Xbox controller just worked by out of the box. So I could try that right now. I hope it works. I hope that makes sense to you. So let's comment we take right B 
get 0 into carry. I mean, this is bit 0 again, but we can think of it as bit 1, because in this loop, do you see what I mean? That's why I didn't comment it in the first place. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, obviously give me a shout in the comments and I'll try my best to, um, to help you. On my previous um, game I made, I, I made um, a main function which done the input. I didn't call it main. There was a, you know, another function called like um, level one or something level one main or something and um, what I did was I, I just used WASD and left it and, and just thought right okay it works people can control it with WASD that's fine then I went back to make a main menu and in that main menu I, I just allowed when I figured out how to make it start the, the level one main loop from the main menu I just copy and pasted the entire loop and uh, done a, a different control method inside and then in the main menu I just linked it to that loop instead which worked perfectly to be honest so, so that's how you would do, that's one way of doing that and if you wanted to um, I mean this would work with a joystick you might have to just figure out I can't find out of the top of my head what bit does left and right on the joystick and stuff like that but the main gotcha on this is remember that the bits are always one, so you've got to check are they zero. That's what got me to start with. I was checking if they were one, which was not working because that's what, when they're not pressed. Um, I don't have a Kempston joystick to test, so I can't really develop for that, you know. But basically it has its own port and it's the same principle as what we're doing but the bits are zero and then they're one when they're pressed which is how it, you would have thought it would be but there's there's no point in me adding the code there it's pretty much it's very similar to in fact it is more efficient than this code there's no bit rolling But like I say, I can't test it, so it's really pointless to do that for me from right now. But what I will do in this, just to sort of, you know, um, really hit home in this video what's going on and wind it up, we'll, um, we'll make a WASD control mechanism rather than this one and two to go left and right. So, so far we just have left and right functionality. That's 65022. <clears throat> it's worth making a constant, really, for these. I should have just made them constants and come up with a good name for them. Anyway, that's good enough. Um, I'm even going to go... There we go. So I want bit 0 to go left, bit 2 to go right, bit 0 is already going left, Simple as that, really, isn't it? I can now change that to be F press G pressed. Of course, you may want to use those in your game. I 
adding up on the keyboard is all well and good but we don't have any move function for up yet so which one do you add first chicken or egg so I'll load A with the Y pos this time CP0 again we're just moving per character cell. Return Z means is that is A equal to whatever number you just used. I don't think this is necessary, but I'll do it anyway. Increase A. We pop it back into Y pos and off we go. May as well copy paste. Maximum Y. We could do return Z. It's it's gonna the same principle applies. Ink. Twenty three for maximum Y. It really is as simple as that once because because we've coded it in such a way where it just checks that variable for position and replaces it. Yeah. And the same goes again with the copy paste. Only this time we want that port there. My mouse wheel is broken, and that's why it's looking a bit uh, crazy sometimes. It's the quirk port. Is it quite though on the spectrum actually? Let me just double check that. Yeah. Alright. Exact same principle applies. So this is Q. Not using. This one we now are using. But up. press not using same for R same for T now we haven't got down so that was actually on this one and it's for S You're starting to see how useful it can be if you plan ahead with your code like that with your comments oopsie daisy um, I just saved it, compile it, let's see if we can move around, well that still works certainly, and so does that, oh it lets me go too far down the screen then. so the move down function Twenty four rows. Isn't that odd? Let's see if it goes to ten. That's got to be exactly ten, though, for it to stop. 
it works. Twenty three should work, I don't understand. It's only moving one character cell per frame. How can it ever be anything more than twenty three if we don't let it? Whoops. I'm just saving it and compiling it again, if it'll ever let me. There we go. Weird, look, it actually lets me type. Okay. I mean, let's try 22. <laughs> Five out of screen. With the buffer there, it's fine, but let me zoom in and try and count on these. Yeah, there's definitely like three further cells it could go down. Try going slow. That's still out of screen. <laughs> to be honest, I have no clue why that's doing that. That's the sort of thing, you know, I'm learning and I just would work, I'd move past it. I'd just say, right, okay, 21 will do. And that'd be it. Maybe that's channel 2, uh, channel 1 down there. That bit I was on about, that could be the case. That's like, it can be, it's not intended for your HUD, but, you know, you can have a HUD down there. It's like a different text line. I don't quite understand what it is. But it's meant for like um, software applications that were around at the time for spectrums mainly. Um, I think this will do for this session. We've 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 seen the keyboard in action. We've now got a WASD um, control functionality, or whatever you want to call it, on our game. I'm going to start making some stuff soon. Like um, well, well, for a start, we're good. The next lesson, we're just going to tidy up the code and also um, learn how to change the color of the border, recap on the color of the screen as well at the same time. After that, we're going to use sound effects, very rudimental sound effects, just like a start of game noise, a deaf sound, maybe a you know, collecting power up noise, very raw sound, just meant as a sort of punchy alert and um, you know we're building a small tool set here to, to make some little little games just for the fun of it um, be adventurous I mean yeah you can't do much with your 8x8 sprite but um, I mean the real adventurous out there and you would be able to join more than one 8x8 together here with the code we've got but it would take a lot of extra lines of code to do that um, but try and have fun with with eight by eight. You know, you can do it. You can do it. I think eventually, it's one thing I really want to do here while we're still in eight by eight is look at making a tile map so that we could start referencing a map um, and have different elements be solid or not solid. That will really give us a great understanding of how to make games. Um, but yeah, I may struggle with that one, but we'll we'll try. But as I say, the next lesson is sound. Well, that actually follows the short lesson coming up next, and just and it is one worth watching in tidying up code and uh, one way to lay it out in your in your uh, computer hard drive to to save you having to um, scroll back and forth, up and down, 
a huge great file. Alright, so see you then. It's coming on very soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.